Alright, hey everybody. Um, hope everyone's having a good day so far. Um, my internet is not the greatest right now, so hopefully it will behave and allow me to stream for a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, sorry if the quality is not the best tonight, but... Okay, there we go. Um, so, let's just see where we are. I know um, yesterday we switched from having to use the action trees to moving to something a little better. Expected. Okay, yeah. I deleted this function uh, because we don't need to ability move get actions. I guess we will, I'll just um, uh, work a little different, so I'll leave that in there just so that I don't have to um, rebuild all the um, assets. But anyway, so we decided to change from sending trees to the server to sending just the um, selections to the server, and that allows us to not have to worry about serialization of the trees. It really simplifies a whole lot of stuff. Now we can see that we already got through the selection phase, and now it's trying to sort action, so we get stopped. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'll do that. Yeah, so I think the way to do it is, yeah, um... So yeah, first we'll need to figure out the order player moves will execute. I put the apostrophe in the wrong spot there. Player's moves will execute. And then we'll convert the selections into lists. And then insert actions list, and then we repeat until all actions have been calculated. So actually there's going to be a step zero, which is to retrieve request and retrieve all needed statistics from the server. So for example, if we structure this game like Pokemon, then um, the player with the highest speed will go first, but at the beginning of the game we don't know everyone's speed. So um, take care of that, we would have to request to the server for all players to send us our speed and then are to send us their speed. And from there we would, of course, uh, know the stat and have it available to be able to be used. Um, so, I'm thinking... Like, so, however we sort the server is kind of like So I just need to figure out how I want the game, to, or the mod authors, to let us know which stats need to be um, fetched. I guess there's two ways we could do it. Either we could try and have the stat names as part of like the um, table of contents files. Um, so like. I guess let's put an ability. We would have a list here. Public string. Um, monster stats. Or um, I guess let's say needed monster stats. And then the game would um, get the stats um, for the specific monster that's using this ability for each player. Another way to do it would be to have uh, another Lua function that would um, just be called and would return a list or however we want to do it of stats that we need. But I think that might be a little overkill. Because it seems like the stats would be constant for each ability. I 
guess you could see, for example, imagine an ability that only does damage if you go after the second player. So if you go before the second player, I mean, I guess you'd always need the speed stat in order to um, uh, determine which player goes first, but then you'd only need the attack and defense stats if um, you go second. So yeah, that's one instance where we wouldn't need like, the stats that we need would be different, depending on the circumstances. Uh, but I guess, um... Another way to do it would be... That the mods don't have to like specifically request a stat. It's just whenever they tried to read a stat that was unknown, we would fetch it from the server and then return to the um, script whenever the stat is ready. I'm not even sure if that might be possible. Okay, so let's um. We don't need this anymore. Okay, so let's uh, pretend that this ability, I don't know, needs this attack stat. So, oops, well, I guess we still do need the using monster, don't we? Okay, so using monster is chosen option dot monster index and so then we need a uh, local using attack is I don't know uh, game state get monster And then we'd have a get stat, uh, I guess a capital attack. So since this monster is on this local computer, well I guess it might not be. But so we might not know this stat, so at this point we'd have to go and request the server to get it. So I wonder if there's a way that I can actually freeze the execution of this Lua script until the stat is known. So that would make things pretty easy. Let's see. Sharp. Freeze script execution. I know you can do like uh do like a yield return type thing, but that would be have to be more explicit, and I don't really want to do that. Okay, so supposedly you can do it through a coroutine. Okay, so apparently you can do it through coroutines. I guess I'll bring up the page I'm looking at. Let's see. Script, coroutine, closure. Trying to see what does this do? Create coroutine script bubbles get X. Oh, here's the code, I see. 
Oh yeah, so I don't really want you to have to call this coroutine yield, but... gets the value back. Why do, you, why do you have to call it back? Oh, I see, because the coroutine yield is the return value. Oh. Alright, so maybe how we would do that Maybe we could say something like local using attack equals. I guess I could maybe. So I can see two ways that we could maybe use this with a coroutine. We would have a game state get monster using monster get stat um, well, I guess instead of get stat I call it like request stat and then local using attack equals coroutine yield and so we would request the stat and then the coroutine yield would give us back the value Another way would be, I think this will work. Let's go routine yield, and then we could have something like request stat, and then this request stat would return some value to the C sharp, and from that it would know to. Get this stat for us and then return it here when it's um, been received. I think this would be easier. I mean, it'd be better for the scripts. I guess I need to make sure it's possible. Okay. So, right. Let's go with this and. Um, I guess this will be a learning experience to see if we can get this to work in Lua. If not, we'll just go back to having the ability to just have like a list of monster stats it needs. Um, which, I mean, it's not horrible, except it will make us have to download more stats than absolutely needed. Okay. So, also, well, I mean, I guess we could get around it, but. I see another um, um, advantage to doing it this way is that we could request multiple stats all at once and then just continually yield until we get them all. Um, so that way we could like bundle up these requests into one message. But I guess we could do the same type of thing by... Uh, having a list here. Although then we couldn't request stats from different monsters. Hmm. I guess we could maybe uh, support both. both ways. Okay, I guess, yeah, let's just, uh, I guess I'll worry about that later and just start on creating the collar. Um, so I guess I will do this is um, I'll try to make the sort function for players because that will be good because we'll need to get each player's um, speed stat so that will kind of um, let us 
um, try to download information for each separate player and for, for a specific monster. So where would I start with that? I guess the table of contents. Okay, we don't need that anymore. So the framework mod would just have um, a method for the um, uh, player sort function. I wonder if I should make a separate class that holds all these, like, gameplay functions. Well, I guess there might not be a whole lot more. Um, so I'll just leave it simple like this. We can always change it. Um, so where would I load this? Wait, well, I gotta put an entry into the game data to hold it. So public, closure, player, turn sort, function, let's call it funk, since that's what I did up here for the map generation. And then in the loading phase we need to first load it here in the mod load manager. Pretty simple. So basically, if this is a framework mod, then we load some stuff right here. Load Lua function. Oh wait. Yeah, I was reading this load Lua file, but the function is the mod player. Contents, player sort function. Oh, hey Taco, good to see you again. How are you doing? Alright, so. I think this looks good. And then the asset organizer. We'll deposit this function into the database. We'll skip function loaded dot framework loaded framework table of contents um, player sort. Okay, so that should be all of it. Oh god, here doing good. Yeah, I'm pretty good too. Yeah, my internet was acting up when I first started, but it seems to have um, leveled out, so good to see that. Okay, so now that's loaded. So I need to add it to the table of contents. Okay, get rid of that. So player sort function Alright, so this will be testing sort players and we gotta have some files. Let's call this uh, framework functions Alright, so we gotta create that file now Streaming assets Oh, okay. I've been here since I started, but I had to go AFK. Oh, well, that's fine. It's glad that you're here now. Alright, so we don't need these conditions anymore, so I'll just delete it. Oh, wait, I don't want a folder, I just want a new file. Uh, text document. So framework functions dot Lua. Yes. Oh, didn't even do that. Okay, 
so testing sort players equals function. Do we have any arguments here? Well, I guess we'd have arguments for each of the player selections. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Well, the sorting. Well, yeah, I would need it because sometimes the selected abilities could affect um, what we're trying to say. Could affect the uh, the order that the players um, attack in, and also we need to get each player's selected monster because that is what we'll use the speed stat of. Okay, so how this would work. Selected monster. Start to work on your own project. <laughs> I'm sure it's not done, but it might make money as my partner's going to throw it on Steam. Oh, that sounds cool. Know, his idea has cost my week. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty good deal. Did you decide to go with Moon Sharp, or is there no Lua involved in this one? I guess this is where I need to commit to how I want to try and request the stats. Although, this way is cleaner. This way allows you more control over which stats you request, and if the mod wants to try and be a little more efficient, they can request them all at once. So, I guess this way is better, even though this one, like I said, looks a little cleaner. Maybe we can support both, so that way if you just need one stat, you don't need to uh, yield a bunch of times. Alright, so let's just say... Uh, Monster dot request stat. Um, we'll need speed. Okay, and so now we basically get all the stats back, but not this one as I haven't found a need for it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've really enjoyed Moon Sharp so far. It's pretty easy to use and pretty powerful as well, I think. Okay, so now we would get back all of the... Oh, stats. How would I... Hmm, okay, so let's see. I do need to yield at some point. So let's uh, you can use while in the way, can't you? Yeah, so while battles. I guess this one. I do want to keep everything in battle state. This doesn't really have anything to do with it. In 
fact, when we request the stats, it may be... Maybe we shouldn't do it from this actual object. Now that I think about it. Let me look and see. Because I'm pretty sure in this blue interface monster, you can't actually change anything. So right now we can just get the position, probably get the prototype, and then so I guess we would have a function here. Um, okay, I'll do a dynamic value. Get stat. Well, maybe the stat would have a an object, so we could like figure out what monster it came from, for example. Okay, so let's create that object real quick. Statistic. Public class statistic. So we need public. Oh, I've got to register it with Moon Sharp, of course. Sharp user data. And hide the constructor. There will probably be another constructor, but. This one will be fine for now. Oh, I don't need the void, of course. And then we'll have a string for maybe the owner type. Because, of course, monsters and blocks can have statistics. And then we'll have dynamic value for the actual value. Uh, let's value dot nil. And the reason we'll do that is because statistics can probably have either a number or a string value. And we'll just make that work really easily with Lua by um, Doing it like this. Because, uh, in case you don't know, the dynamic value is basically a Lua variable which is untyped. So you can return either a string or a, a number. Okay, and then we'll need the int for the owner monster index. And then these will throw values, of course, if. Um, they don't contain the block. I wonder if it would be easier also if all of these scripts, instead of just having monster indexes, if they actually just return the monster object itself. I'm trying to think if there's any downside to that really. It'd just be more like data we'd have to shuffle around. Yeah, that's probably better to be honest. And then do I have a block class? I'm not sure. Okay, I do. But these will just return null for now. Uh, well, we kind of need an index because, well, I guess not. I think the reason why I did do that is because we have this get monster class and we don't know the actual index 
Or, I mean, there's no way to refer to a monster besides its index. So I guess we could still have that, but most functions can just return the actual object. I think that will be okay. So I guess I should make these caches uh, public to the... Um, um, what am I trying to say? Public to... C sharp so that these other classes will be able to um, get objects from here. Right, so let's see, where do I use a monster index so far? Just so I can go ahead and update. Oh, yeah, so the args and the ability move targets. So I don't need this stuff, but I think I will need classes like it to send um, when we actually get the action. So I'm not going to delete it just yet. But we don't need this tree node anymore. some stuff in here. Target indicator, so type, position, that's good. Usable args, okay, yeah, so it, it has a monster index, so I should change this to just be a monster. state and then so I need to make this public so other classes can access it but I guess since we kind of create these objects as needed it'd probably be better if I just let C sharp classes call this function So in that case, all right. So let's um, all right. So the only confusing thing here is that this uses the Lua index. So if I wanted to create another function that uses C sharp or the game logic index and hide it from. C sharp. I mean, hide it from Lua. I don't think I can do that. Get monster game logic. Uh, with game logic index. And of course, we just would return get monster index plus one. And then this is moon sharp hidden. And another moon sharp hidden, except this would be public board block get block with game logic index. Hey, Ice Boy, good to see ya. How are you doing tonight? And this is basically the same. We return, get block. Although this uses a board position, so I don't know if we need to generate a new board position just for this. I'm doing pretty good too. Working on some new uncharted territory, so always exciting. Here I should, well I need to go back through all these classes and do better um, error checking because right now I just return null but I really should throw an exception.
Maybe it would be better if these objects... Well, no, because this is like the central place for all the Lua objects. Maybe that's the problem, and you should have a separate class. Um, so let's see. How would I... How inspired you get back to RPG Maker? Good, I'm having a good time so far. Alright, so this won't actually be... Well, I guess we can keep it in this Lua interface namespace, but it won't actually be an object that Lua can access. Oh, did I actually accidentally delete the dictionaries? I didn't mean to do that. Well, maybe I did, but... <laughs> so basically, this registry will just have links to all of these um, objects. And I guess we can make this have the link to the actual battle state object as well. Same thing with a lot of my early projects. do it is this registry will just have these objects and then anything else that needs these objects can just refer to this this because this is just the Lua object registry. It's not supposed to store these other game objects, so I take that back. But we will need to pass this still. Um, actually, the object registry might still need these ob um, yeah, these other objects to create the monsters and blocks. So. So yeah, we don't want these anymore. Let's 
So basically this get monster will call the Lua object registry get monster. So I can kind of copy these. Except yeah, these will both use the game logic index. Oh, let's put game in front. R G. Well, I already have dot index, so that's fine. And same thing with these blocks. So this will just be again an index. index. Leave that out. I'll just comment it out because I think other classes will need it. I kind of want to do something like Fire Emblem and RPG Maker. I leave it for another project. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that's. Well, I guess it would be possible, but you probably have to script a lot. So yeah, we can just return registry, oh, which I don't have a reference to yet. This registry. So the battle state actually, well, it needs the battle, but it doesn't need the log or the game database anymore. Registry get monster Lua index minus one. And then let's say return registry get block dot index. Alright, so that looks good. I think you can do a two point okay. Oh yeah, look for plugins. Yeah, I'm sure that there are some. I just, yeah, it's probably not out of the box, but. Okay, so let's delete. That. Well, I don't know. Uh, we might need it later, but. It's gonna complain to me that these are unused. So I'll just leave it for now. Okay, so we'll use more arms. I guess this is still okay. But it might be easier. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter how we get, if some other class gives us a instance of monster. So let's get back. To the, um, the script that actually calls that function. Oops, which is ability usable to a caller. Yeah, so this is the thing, we just don't want to send the monster. Where's the class that actually holds the... Well, it used to hold the battle state. Oh, the Lua Interface Manager. Okay, well this is still fine because it sets globals. That's private Lua interface or Lua registry. Okay, so I don't really want to make the registry itself be um, a component. So maybe I'll just wrap it in a variable. Variable claim. So registry equals controller dot claim variable. Okay, and then we can just create the value here. Database battle log. 
And then we will register the bottle state instead of creating a new one. Bottle state. Okay, yeah, these can still be returned like that, I guess. Because Lua doesn't have access to this file, so. Especially VX Ace and MV made it even easier with JavaScript. Just plugins. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to find some on Google. Probably gonna be a bunch of errors. Oh really? Okay, I knew there's gonna be something. All oh, right, because I didn't actually return anything here because we were still thinking about that. Okay, so usable little color. So I need to have a variable sub to the Lua object registry. And this will just be, it'll change monster index to monster. Yeah, I guess it should really be ability name. We could have an ability class, but I'm not sure if. sure if uh, that will ever be necessary. So for now I'll just leave it for with an ability name. Uh, we can always go change it. I guess what information would... Well I guess the only thing would be any metadata about the ability that we have in the, uh, the mod file. Uh, let's... Is there even anything there right now? Yeah, it's just the name and then a bunch of functions. I could see the ability having some things like a separate damage. Maybe even different like attributes. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, so yeah, we can always add that later if we need it. So anyway, Lua registry, get... Oh, I have to type value, get monster. Alright, I don't have to add plus one because we're using the data indexes now. Okay, so that's one thing down. Um, I guess I'll check if we have any errors. Okay, no, I guess that's all good now. Before I play the game, let's uh, go ahead and update the um, get targets. Alright, so we have this Lua class, and again, this will just be a monster instead of a monster index. So we gotta get variable subs oops. Uh, checked registry. I actually don't use any of those yet. Oh, I forgot to actually get that from the rest of the game. the other class. So let's go back to the usable caller and I just need to add that one line to get the Lua registry variable. So that's fine. And then we can again just call monster Lua registry value get monster 
Parameter is not monster ID. So I think that's everything. So I should update these scripts now. Yeah, so we really don't need to call get monster anymore. We'll still have this get block because uh, this is a difference between the position and then the block at that position. So, okay, so I think all this will work. Let's go ahead and play the game and see if it can get all the way through. Oh. So the variable, well, it's not claimed yet. It's a bit weird. But why was? Oh, wait, let me see. Google interface manager. Oh, I think I know what I did wrong. Okay, so this is... a bit annoying because I can't do this in the constructor. I guess I could just have it wait till the next frame. It's not a huge deal. Another option would just be to make this a component so I wouldn't have to go through variables. Uh, that's probably what I should do so it's not so hacky. I need to get these components from it. Okay, so return false. Uh, I don't really like this actually. It's going to be messy because I need to get these values. Do I like desserts? Well, of course. <laughs> I'll eat just about anything with mint or peanut butter on it. Okay, so yeah, what I need to do is just have a separate function. Calls the controller register. What is it called? Oh, yeah, subscribe ticking. And so let's just say first. Well, I'll just call it setup. And the priority is right away. And what does this return? It returns a message sub. I think if I unsubscribe here, that will cause some problems. So, if I do it that other way, I can do it. I was trying to be fancy. Um, so, first update. So it's toggleable. So now I, I just need to do this the 
first frame instead of right away. This is delta time, which we don't need, but... Oh, now I'm gonna have to save references to the database. And the battle log. Oh, this is a big deal, but... Okay, so now... Yeah, I shouldn't complain anymore. Because at this point, the game has taken control of this variable, so... Alright. Okay, so now it loaded all the way through. Okay, so there was a problem. Object reference not set to instance. Let's see. Okay, so I guess this value is null. Oh, maybe that's because... Yeah, I need to... I forgot to set this first update to active. That way, this is only called the very first update, and right after it's called it deactivates itself. Oops, I think I pressed play too quick. You gotta wait for. You need to think a bit. Okay, and now it's working correctly. Okay, so now we go. We got back. All the way to the sorting phase like we were before. Okay, so yeah, that was a pretty lengthy detour, but I think it will make scripts easier to handle. Okay, so now... Using monster is just chosen an option dot monster, and then I don't have to type get monster. Oh, except this is wrong. Oh, well, this scrap we don't need anyway. Um, it's this one. So yeah, we are selected monster, and then we request stat. What kind of desserts are my favorite? Yeah, well, like I said, basically anything with mint, peanut butter. Not super picky. Chocolate's good, of course. So... So we have to have put a yield return in here somewhere. But since we're getting stats for a bunch of monsters, I guess, do we want to... Assume that the stats always re are yielded in the same order that they're requested. Uh, that's probably the best. way. So we requested a bunch of stats for a bunch of different monsters, and I need to get the stat and then store the actual speed value for each monster in a table. So let's say local speeds it's a table. How about I'll have a function that will be, I don't know, while Oh, we'll see the yeah. The reason I went down this whole battle rabbit hole is because I was trying to figure out what function I actually want to call to request a stat. So maybe I'll just have a global function request stat, and then I can pass it the target and then the name of the stat. So this could be a monster or a block, and it'll have something like while 
um, waiting for stat requests. That should be lowercase in it. Um, I forget if this is a syntax for while statements in Lua. It's been a while. So Lua while loop. First test while if it's false, loop ends, otherwise it executes the body. Yeah, so it's just like a normal any other loop. Okay, so then we would type local response or I don't know, let's say local stat equals yield. Oh wait, it's coroutine dot yield. <laughs> yeah, I think this is fine. Another way we could do it is we'd request these stats and then we would return the stat variable in the yield here and then it would give us the actual value for that. That might be a good way to do it. That way we would know for sure which stat we're getting. I guess then I need to store that stuff. So local requests. Although I could just do it this way that if you don't um, return anything, then it just gives you the first stat that's ready that you asked for. I guess we could do it. Well, I keep on saying that we'll support either way, so that's fine. Okay, so then. Speeds stat dot monster dot owner player. I guess we don't really need to care about the player, we can just do it by monster. Equals stat dot value. I guess I'll say owner monster dot. Sounds a little better. And since we only ask for monster stats, we don't need to check to make sure this is like a block or something because I think this yield function will be sure to only return stats that we have asked for. As we, meaning the specific script. <laughs> or the specific function, even. Okay, so now we get all the stats. responses because it could be that we might request some other type of information at some point and so this I don't have to rename this function later okay so now we I think Lua has table sort yeah it does I forget the arguments though so let me look it up Lua table dot sort Is it good to try RPG Maker to make games for a beginner? Yeah, I would say so. 
because it has like a pre-made engine and you can do a whole lot without um, needing to program anything. So I would say it's a good beginner's option. Yeah, that is a good point, Taco. It doesn't really teach you to code. I guess it depends what your goals would be with the project. Okay, so what am I looking for? Uh, I just want to see the arguments. It's never ready to be sorted, plus an optional order function. If this function is not provided, it uses a default lesson operator. Oh, okay, yeah, this is true. Um, yeah, see, I'm sorting the speeds. Well, I guess this is fine. I need to have another list to be uh, monsters. And this, uh, so I table dot insert stat, oh yeah, stat owner monster. I'd say Taco's advice there is pretty good. Game Maker is nice if you want to make a game with a bit more depth, like you said. And then Unity if you really want to jump in. So we want to store, uh, sort the monsters. Well, let's rename this to order, I'd say. And a function. So how does I think it's did it say you turn true? This function receives two arguments and has to return true if the first argument should come first. So the first one would be the monster with the highest speed, so return speeds A is greater than speeds B. So, yeah, I guess this is good. And then do we just return... Yeah, what is the return value for this? I guess we could either have it return a list of the uh, players. Which is a bit... Yeah, we just sorted this based on monster, so let's change this. So stat owner, oops, dot owner player, and then we'll insert, okay, let's uh, store the player here. So now the table values will be the player, and so the speeds gives the stat value for the, mo the selected monster for that player. And then at the end we just return order. So I think this is correct. Oops, where's the... I thought I had Moonsharp's coroutine. Page up. Yeah, 
was trying to see if you could combine the coating yield with just um, a return value. Because I haven't really worked with coroutines yet, so I'll need to look into that. I guess that's what we'll be trying to figure out. Okay, so now that we have the script, we need to focus on getting this to actually work. So what other values do I need here? Let's work on trying to get the Lua interface up and running. So this should be a list of all selections. So I need some um, list of the selections. Okay, so this is just like the single option. Okay, well I guess we can still use this. And it's different, well, because it only stores one option. Like this target option was also mutable. Yeah, because you could add an indicator. Right, so let's see. Well, I'll just create a new class and we'll go from there. Um, so this would be the player turn selection. Oh, I guess first of all I needed to create the turn selection list, didn't I? Okay, so this will be uh, sort players arcs. Yeah, Unity is an on Steam, but it's, yeah, it says unity3d.com. Okay, sharp user data. So again, we're just creating another object that will be used in Lua, specifically this args variable, which right now has the selection. Oh, this is actually wrong. It should be selection dot selected monster. Maybe we could just put monster. I also have selected player and other things like that. the constructor. Always a good idea to do. Okay, and then we have a list of... Well, I guess we can't really do it this way. Okay, how did I do the iterator before? Get horizontal neighbors. I can't actually just return a list here because I don't want it to be. Um, what's the word? I don't want it to be uh, changed any. So this will be get selections. I think this was an I. So we don't have this. What is the actual class that contained those actually? Okay, this is a turn selection list. So I guess um, I'll just store it here. Um, 
no, we should actually, we should just have a list of the already converted um, player turn selection. Okay, so let's get rid of that reference. And then this will just be available to C sharp. And we'll hide it from Lua. And I'll make it public. It doesn't need to be set. Yeah, that's correct. As of about a year ago, they unlocked. Maybe it's been longer. I don't know. They unlocked almost all functions from for the free version of Unity. Okay, so this should be public. Scales pretty well. I mean, it might take a while to uh, compile if you have a really complex game. constructor in here, because I think otherwise, if you don't hide it, we will, we'll, we'll be able to call that, even if you create another constructor. Just return an integer for the player. And I'm not sure if we want to have a player object. Um, but for now, I'll just keep it like this. about it. I mean, our script right now only needs the monster, but we might as well provide these things. And the setters will be hidden from Lua. Okay, so now that's all good. Okay, so now we need to make, well, I guess these request stats and waiting for responses. So where did I do that? Oh, I don't need this class anymore. Okay, so yeah, I registered this function, so that's okay. 
Although I know that these request stats will need to be registered by for a few calls for the sort players and also when we try to get the actions for a player because we might need stats for that as well. Um, but I guess uh, for now we'll just put everything in one class and I can separate it out pretty easily I think. Yeah, because right now I mostly just want to test this, so... Alright, so... Uh... I'm wondering, like, I'm getting to the point where I have a lot of classes here that I should maybe try to separate them out and organize things a little better. Unfortunately, I don't think the namespaces will update automatically. I'll worry about that some other day when I do spring cleaning for the project. Okay, so this will just be a sort player. Lua color. Oh, does it need to be public? And we'll get the play subcontroller. And I think, let's close everything because there's too much scripts open. And I'll go ahead and copy this class to use it as a um, bit of a starting point. Although now I just <laughs> took the time to create that constructor and I just deleted it, but whatever. Sort players Lua caller. Okay, so we yeah, got sort players call result. Sort players Lua call parameters. Yeah, that's good advice, Lazy Talk Lazy Taco. Game dev is not easy and it does take time. For instance, I've been working on this game for over a month, and it's not really playable yet, so... Alright, just had to reload it. So what, do we, what would we uh, return here? I guess it would be a, just another list, a uh, turn selection list. Should leave. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Because we gotta also submit the list and the parameters. I guess we'll just create a new one and copy the things over. Doesn't really make much difference. something to deal with uh, the stat requests, of course. Okay. Um, so, what did I call it? Player... Okay, I sort players' arguments. Okay, it just has... 
So it doesn't really have anything we add in here. I just need to create all the player's turn selections in the list. I wish you met us back at the beginning of summer. Yeah, summer's never long enough, is it? We have the list here. I just need to create this for every uh, selection in the list. Tonight's gone by super fast. So for each selection and parameters.list. Alright, so what type is this? That's not going to tell me, is it? Oh right, list.selections. Okay, uh, yeah, so it's just a turn selection. Alright, so let's uh, prefix it with G like I've done before. Monster equals Lua registry value gets monster selection dot monster index and what else did it have? The ability. Which is database. Oops. Abilities selection dot ability index dot name. Do I have a Discord? I do. Uh, I actually have been meaning to add it down to my channel description. So yeah, let me uh, finish up for tonight, and then I'll get you a link. need any of this stuff I just want to make it so there's not any errors so I'm just going to quickly try and fix some of these problems that out because we'll need that shortly. Oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a bot. Maybe I'll do that this weekend. Oh, Ice Boy, I just said, um, yeah, I do have a Discord. I just need to get link to it. I've been meaning to add a link to it on the bottom of my channel descri description. It's really new. It's just me and one other channel regular at the moment that chat back and forth. But All right, I guess um, I'll get it right now. I don't know what's going to pop up, so <laughs> I'll put up a slide real quick. Loading at the moment. Thank you so much for playing my game. Okay, well, well while that is going, 
It's taking quite a while. I just opened it earlier today, I'm not sure why. Alright, so we need to have some hook here because we need to register the waiting for responses function and also this request stat function. Is it loaded yet? No. I feel like it's bugged out or something. Ooh, you're almost done with Fire Emblem Fates Conquest. Is that your favorite path so far? Okay, um, I don't really know why it's not loading. when people are waiting for me it has to be buggy that's the uh, curse of technology I'll just try and use the web app Save a conquest so you can do both. Oh, right. All right. Okay, so Discord gets subscription link. I just set this up earlier today, so I'm trying to figure out how to get one of those subscription links that people send. tried the, uh, isn't there like a third, um, path on it, on Fire Emblem as well? Alright, uh, sorry for, uh, <laughs> keeping you waiting, I figured it out. description soon. Alright. So yeah, it'd be nice to have some more people around in there. Okay, yeah, so thanks for putting up with me. I'm glad that my internet stayed up for the rest of the night, so that's all, always good. But I think that's probably going to wrap it up for me for tonight. We'll work some more on this and figure out exactly how we'll deal with getting um, all the stats and other requests from the server. 
Yeah, I wanted to figure out exactly how to do this coroutine, but unfortunately we didn't get that far today. But it looks like it's not too difficult. I should probably put these links. Um, so we're going to be doing this first. I'll put these links in here so I can... Oh, I don't need that. Refer to them easily. Can't wait to play Revelation. Okay, yeah, I knew that was a third type. Or a third path. So it logs in train because you're saving it for last. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense. But anyway, yeah, thanks everybody for watching and chatting. I've had a lot of fun tonight, so. Uh, yeah, thanks again for coming by. And. Oh, yeah, one other thing. Ludum Dare is this weekend, and I usually take part especially since I've been streaming, but I'm going to be gone almost all day Saturday, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, but oh, maybe I can squeeze it in. We'll see. But anyway, I'll be back tomorrow for sure. Same time at 8.30 Eastern, and we'll continue where I left off. Hope to see everybody there, and thanks again. Bye-bye. Oh, you're in my Discord now. Okay, great to hear. Oh yeah, both of you guys joined. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Ludum Dare. It starts tomorrow at... What time is it? I think 8 or 9 Eastern. But, yeah, like I said, I'll be gone all day Saturday, so that's about half of it. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.